What up, everybody? Pastor G in the house. I'm excited about being here as well. I'm very thankful today. Today is Monday. This We're ending uh, uh, January. Man, it's such an incredible time to be alive. I'm thankful. I'm very thankful. I'm back in my regular suit today. I'm very excited about that. I'm thanking God for all of his blessings. All of them. Every last one of them every blessing. I know I can't count them all, but the ones that I can, I am thankful to God for all of his blessings. I hope you are too. Thank you, Pastor Nola Brown, being the first to be in the house today. I am so thankful. I am so thankful. Thank you, uh, uh, the Antonio Withers. Thank you for being in the house. Of course, my wife is in the house. Thank you forever, baby. Uh, the Vonnie Harden, Thank you for being in the house. Ella William Boone, thank you for being in the house. Uh, Jackie Dyer, thank you so much. Artie Reynolds, thank you so much, my brother in New York. Thank you, man. Watch all your posts. Uh, the uh, Yes, I am thankful. I am thankful for all things. I was with Mike, Mike in uh, L.A. this past weekend. I think you were... You're getting ready for um, your show. Thank you, Artie, for being in the house today. Uh, Sylvester Esau, thank you for being in the house. Uh, Valencia, thank you so much for being here today. I want you to stick with me today because there are so many things that are are are, are pro happening in your life. God is good to all of us, and we uh, we should always be thankful for all that He is doing and all that He's done. Just be thankful for the blessings, the the tremendous blessings that He's bestowed upon your life. Our, our job is always to be thankful just to be thankful and if we are good steward over the things that he's already blessed many 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 other doors are going to be open thank you donald for being in the house thank you my uplift member from los angeles california met him for the first time this past week it was so exciting uh, 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 meeting Donald who listened to Lunchtime Uplift every Monday, Wednesday and Friday from Los Angeles got a chance to meet in person thank God, blessings of God is on your life thank you Kelly uh, for being in the house thank you Marissa for being in the house thank you, thank you, thank you Shalanda now I always acknowledge people because I think it is such a blessing for people to even tune in to listen especially with the schedules that we have especially with with, with uh 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 uh, all the things that that is happening, uh, you know what, Artie? I'm tell you, man, my mind went blank. I could not even think of the show. Uh, I got my friend Artie Rules in from New York, but uh, 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 he's 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 one of the musicians on American Idol, one of the, in the band uh, with Ray Chu on American Idol. I couldn't even think of that when I began, Artie. I'm sorry about that, but thankful that Artie Reynolds is in the house today. Blessings, man. Blessings to you and your wife and your family. Amen. I think you guys are getting ready to start a new season of American Idol. Thank, thank you for being in the house. Uh, Paris, thank you for being in the house. Thank you for being Christine, Minister Christine Dawson, thank you for being in the house. There again, I like to acknowledge people. I'm just excited because people are in the house. I, I'm, I'm so thankful. And I'm getting ready to get into something today. And I want you to share this, share this video today. I'm here to do what I believe God has called me to do, uh, the calling and the mandate on my life. That's to uplift people. People need to be uplifted. That's all. We need to be uplifted. There are so many things that we are encountering. There's so many challenges that we face in all phases of life. It doesn't matter how it looks to you, how blessed I am and how much I got going on. I'm going to show you in scripture today. It is it is, it is, it is such a, a, a need right now for people to hear about the love of God. I know we, we, we hear so many messages about how we are destined to, to fail and destined to go to hell and destined for chaos to ensue in our life, destined for everything to be chaotic, destined for, but I'm here to tell you, I want to be a voice that, that, that's here to shine light on the love of God toward you. You need to dream again. That's all. God wants you to dream. He wants you to believe in him. I say this all the time. And it's very important that you understand this. God's only need from you is to be believed, to be believed. God got, God's got everything. God's got everything. God's got everything. Only thing he needs from you is to be believed in your moments of, 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 of weakness, 
in your moments of distress, in your moments of, of, I don't know what I'm going to do. He wants you to believe him. He's got the answer. God's got the answer. There's no doubt about it. God knows. God knows and God sees. This is what he wants us to know. This is what he continues to want. In, even in the times, all of the time, God wants you to know and have confidence that he knows and he sees and he has an answer. I know there's going to be many things that, that, that's being told you that he's ready to turn his back on you. The scripture does not say that. That's someone that is angry that might tell you that God, he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's a promise. That is a promise from God. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Never leave nor forsake you. This is a promise from God to you. Because he wants you to trust him. He wants you to believe. He wants you to come to him again. He wants you to desire the life that he promised you. He wants you to lock in to that life. That's what God is here for. I know we hear so much stuff. I know we. I, I feel impressed to say. I know we hear so many things about how he's he's waiting for the moment to destroy you. He's waiting for the moment to 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 place chaos. He's going to teach you a lesson this time. God is going to teach you a lesson. Well, the scripture says. Let me tell you what the scripture says. The scripture says that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. The scripture says, the Holy Spirit, you meet, read John 5th chapter, John 5th chapter, the 22nd verse. Jesus says this, it's written in red, so I, 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 we should believe Jesus. We should believe Jesus. He says, the Father, God, does not participate in judgment. He has given it all to the Son. Read it. Read it. If you don't believe me, go read it. John 5, 22. In other words, he says, I've come that you might have life and it more abundantly. Uh, uh, John 10, 10. I've come that you have life. I come that you have life, and I want you to have it more abundant. That's the God that we serve. Now, now, yes, yes, my brothers and sisters, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. There are requirements in life. Uh, don't let nobody tell you that there are not. That there are, there are requirements in life. There's always requirements in life. There's a standard of living that I must live for God. But God is not sitting back trying to destroy my life. He's not sitting back waiting on the opportunity to kill me. He's he's all powerful. He's he's God. He's he has the ability to 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 take life if he desired to at any moment. And if 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 you are such the nemesis that most people paint in the picture, you you having the power that you possess as a human, whenever there is somebody or something that's a nemesis over and over again, when you have the power or the ability to eliminate, what do you do? You eliminate, you get rid of it. You get rid of the, the, the nemesis. Now just imagine, just, just, just think. We serve the all-powerful God. We serve the God that had to control heaven and earth, life and death. All of that is, is, is in his power. Why would he... Uh, allow a, a just a, a constant nemesis of his to 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 continue if he was so upset with the the nemesis it doesn't make sense right no he will eliminate so 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 <clears throat> we got to be we got to be careful god is about <clears throat> excuse me bringing people together again bringing them back to him again he wants you to see he, god's desire is for you to prosper God's desire. Now, I know this is getting under some people's skin because they think this is compromised. It's the truth. All I want is the truth. I don't want any, the truth. Let, just give me the truth. All I can do, my obligation is always to speak the truth. I can't, I can't make people receive it. I can't make, all I do, all I'm obligated to do is tell the truth. Whether I think you make the right decision or not, that's not mine. I'm not God. I have, I have relieved myself of the duty of being somebody's God. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to sentence you to hell. I'm not going to tell you anything. It is not, not, that's not my job. My job is to speak truth. Once I speak the truth, it is on you. It is your choice to receive it. It's your choice to reject it. That's on you. I'm not going to be mad at you either way. It is not my job to be mad. See, see that, you know, there's a difference between soul and spirit. Real quickly, this is not my lunchtime uplift today, but I want to I want to make some definition of some, some distinctions, if you will. Look, uh, there's a difference between soul and spirit. And the Bible says in Hebrews, says very clearly that the word of God can distinguish or decipher or discern between soul and spirit. Uh, I think what we are seeing so much of is the fact that 
some people are, are operating out of the soul, but they're calling it the spirit. And this is why we get so emotional, because the emotional part of me resides in my soul. And the soulless realm is where I get emotional. It's when I see things emotional. If I say something to you and you don't react the way that I desire for you to react, I get upset because you didn't react the way that I wanted you to. And I say, God is upset because you didn't uh, you didn't act the way I thought. No, that's not the spirit. The spirit don't have to get upset because the spirit knows the mind of God. If you don't react a certain way once you hear something out of the spirit, it doesn't mean that it does, it's not true or not won't happen. So the, the spirit already knows that this is God's intention. And if God said it, this is the way it is. I don't have to get emotional. Only in the soulless realm, if I tell you something that God said and you don't operate and you don't act and you don't react the way I want, I get mad. And now I'm telling you that you're on your way to hell. Well, that's not my. That's not my calling. And maybe somebody else has gotten that, but that's not Pastor G. Pastor G is to bring your eyes back to the love of God concerning you that, that Jesus talked about in his gospel of the kingdom. Uh, I think if we could see again what God is saying, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to bring people into a place where they can hear when you are telling them that they are hated by the person you're telling them to listen to. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. That's why Jesus rebuked his disciples when the disciples said, they are rejecting you, Jesus. These Samaritans don't want to even see you come through. And they said, so we call down fire from heaven. This is Luke, the ninth chapter, starting at the fifth, second verse. Do you want us to call down fire? Because they are rejecting you, Jesus. Anybody reject Jesus need to see the fire fall down on them. And he, he rebukes the disciples instead of telling them, yeah, do this because they're rejecting me. What happens? He rebukes the disciples and tells the disciples this. You don't even know what spirit you are of. I didn't come to destroy. I know there was a dispensation of people being destroyed that rejected. But here I come to bring grace that people can see again the love of my father so that they can come boldly to the throne. They can come again and listen again to what my father is saying. Because it is not his desire that none should perish. I preach right there. That's, it is not his desire for people to be destroyed. It's not his desire for people's life to be in chaos. It is not his desire for people. I know people, yes, there is a requirement for our life. Yes, yes, yes. But with love and kindness, he draws us to him. Not with hatred. Not with a, a, a spirit of of, 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 of the love of God. Listen, it is not your job. It's not your job. It's my job to speak truth. God loves people. He loves people that are not following what he says right now. Eventually with the love, we have to believe. Here it is. I've got to believe that the power is in the word of God. I've got to believe it. First, before I go and be a witness, I've first got to believe that there is transformation power in the word of God. I believe it. I believe that the word of God, as the scripture says, is quick. It's powerful. It is sharper than any 2S sword. In other words, I believe that if I speak the truth, it'll go in and start working. The Bible is alive. In other words, it is quick. It is alive. In other words, it's quick. It's powerful. In other words, where whenever it gets to the place, it can do a quick work. I've got to allow it. I've got to be disciplined enough not to add my ingredient into what is already perfect. In other words, when I add me, when I start getting my emotion, when I start trying to tell you all about how I feel about it, then I get in trouble because you're going to get re people rejecting because they don't want to hear about you. They need to hear about Jesus, period. And Jesus, when they hear about Jesus, he's got the power to transform their life. Maybe it's been because I was presenting too much of me and what I thought and not enough of. Uh, Jesus and what he thinks and that's what lunchtime uplift is all about we're about to see the hit the hand move of God I think like we've never seen before I'm excited about that I am so excited about that so that's what lunchtime uplift is all about for those that you don't know it's about uplifting it's about getting people I believe that if I can get a person in the room with Jesus I think their life is better already I think he could say things to them that I could never even mention and it is about a personal relationship, right? Yeah, it's still, it's not about you. It's not about them, God, and me. It's about them and God. 
I'm just one lead them to the room. I get them in the room and then I let God do the rest. Okay, let's let's make that agreement. Now, I want to I want to speak on something today. This is a very powerful day of words. Share this if you will. Do me a favor. Share this video with someone. Thank you, Leo, for being in the house. Thank you, Derek Anderson, for being in the house. Shalisa, Mashana Cooney, thank you. Latasha Anderson, thank you for being in the house. Donald Lindsay Robinson, thank you for being in the house. Bernadette, thank you for being in the house. Come in the house today. Gilbert, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Clinton, Tremaine, Sheila Butler, thank you guys for being in the house. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please share. Uh, CC, uh, Chicken and Waffles, thank you for being in the house. I was out in LA at Roscoe's and CC's might win. Uh, Raina, thank you for uh, being in the house. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being in the house. Sandra, thank you for being out. Now, let me get into this. Let me get into this. Here we go. Thank you, Salento. What's up, Salento? Thank you for being in the house here it is i'm gonna be teaching today uh from uh first kings 19 this is a very powerful story you know you know i'm watching people and and and, and I, I need you to hear this because it doesn't matter what phase or what level you are in god it doesn't matter it doesn't matter we all have days that man we don't know our left from our right sometimes we don't even know our up from our down now now it's gonna you this will take a, a humble person to even admit this and and I don't care there again I'm a pastor I don't care there are days when when it just does not make sense you can you can think you have dotted all your eyes thank you Tawana Stevenson you can think that you've dotted all your eyes you think you crossed all of your T's you thought you got it going on and still there come days of discouragement Yes, all of us. I don't care what, how much money you got. I don't care what people say about you, what your title is. I don't care what it is. There are days that you're going to feel discouraged. It's all right. I think the, the, the moment that I realized that there are days that no matter who I think I am, no matter what I think I got, no matter uh, none of that, I'm still, I still need God. I do. Thank you, Rapunzel. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Krista Brown, for being here. I still need God. I don't care. I, I need him. I, don't, I need God. That's just plain and simple. The, the moment I realize this, that there, there are days that I, I got to have it. That's a matter of fact. That's a matter of fact. I should never believe that I can make it without him. I, could, I, I should never believe that I can make it without him. I, I, the day that I think I can make it without him, I'm in trouble. I need him to open up doors for me. I need him to make ways for me. I need God in my life. I don't preach self-confidence. Please hear what I'm saying. I don't preach self-confidence. Uh, uh, self-confidence is overrated. Now watch this, watch this. But I do uh, 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 speak uh, supreme confidence because I got to believe and be confident in a supreme God. And if he's not first and foremost, what I believe about myself, you know, I will lie to me. Yeah, I will. I'll, listen, let me clean my camera. Seems like my camera is messed up. That's me cleaning my camera. You know, I will lie to me. I will. I look in the mirror and I lie to myself. I tell, I tell me that it's everybody else. Nothing to do with me. I did everything correct. I was, I was perfect. And if they had done what they were supposed to do. You will do it too. You will lie to yourself. You, it's very easy to do. Here it is. I want. I want to. I want to teach about uh, a, a, a a young man in scripture. Cause cause we all. Thank you, Clemmy uh, Barton. Thank you for being in the house. Thank you, Tamil. Thank you for being in the house. Watch this. Here's a young man, and I need you to see this because moving forward, and we all are moving forward because it's God's desire for us to progress. We're all moving forward. That's gonna be days. I'm telling you. You're gonna get up on the wrong side of the bed. Yes, and you don't think you got up on the right side of the bed because you're going to have trouble getting up on that side of the bed and you say, I never get up over there. I'm just making an analogy. And you're going to get up on the side that you think it's right. And then this, you're going to discover that, man, today was a tough day. Man, it was difficult on me today. And watch, and watch. It's all because you need God. God has God never let you operate and get to significant levels in life without Him. We all need Him. Yes, the enemy will tell you that you are suffering because God is mad. He's upset about this. He's mad. No, no. That I'm cleaning the camera. Seems like I don't know if I'm blurry to you guys. Okay. There, there, there are times, and it just, it just, I get up and it just don't work. It just does not work. It just seems like I supposed to have been going left, but for some reason, my car turned right. 
I, I was supposed to be going up, but it seems like I'm going down. It just seems like there's days like that, that nothing seems to work. Now, you can listen to your adversary, your enemy, tell you that, oh, I know what that is. And he, go, he starts you down this trail of trying to see all other things that you've done wrong to cause God to be mad at you. And now you're just going to have to suffer. We all go through that. I don't care what your occupation, what level, how sanctimonious you are, how how devout you are, how whatever you are. We all go through those moments. And I want to read some texts today because you got to build confidence again in a supreme God. Don't build self-confidence in yourself because you will sabotage you given the right opportunity. You will lie to yourself. We all do it. We'll tell ourselves that we did everything. It's everybody else's fault. It's them, 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 and them. But I think the thing, once I do self-inventory, once I look at me clearly, because when I get it down, when I, when I look at it clearly and I get it right, I am unstoppable because what God has assigned for me to do is for me to do. I'm going to have some ups. I'm going to have some downs. But I still believe God. Thank you, Rapunzel, for being in the house. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Judge Rita Baylor, for being in the house. Thank you, Anitra, for being in the house. Thank you, Sonny Mays. Thank you for being in the house. Here we go. Uh, 1 Kings uh, 19. That's where I'm going to be. 1 Kings 19. Here's a very familiar story, but I want to pull something out because I think it's applicable to our today. This is very. I talked this yesterday at my church. I mean, I mean, wow, it was so powerful. There were people, I think, I've seen chains and things being broken off people's life because God is here to break the chains. And, and, and as the song says, he want to break every chain. The more I will be honest with me, the more he breaks the chains in my life. You are due a chain-breaking moment in your life. Everything has that has held you down. This is the season and the time for it to be broken. New levels of life you should be living now. And trust God and he's going to bring. He's going to bring you into the place. Here it is, uh, uh, 1 Kings 19, starting at the first verse. I'm going to read this. It's a very powerful story. It says, it says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message. I want you to I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this very powerful. Then Jezebel, this is after Ahab tells Jezebel what had just happened on Mount Carmel. How Elijah, you know, the showdown between the prophets of Baal and Elijah, the true prophet of God. Uh, he's telling her that, man, you should have seen it. As a matter of fact, uh, Ahab is telling Jezebel that Elijah and the God he serves is the winner, is the true and living God. He's telling Jezebel this and so Jezebel replies replies second verse says and Jezebel sent a message unto Elijah saying so let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thou life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time please hear me my brothers and sisters because this is going to be so powerful I believe because we're all standing right here at this moment so Jezebel sends a message and say, okay, I don't care what Ahab is talking about, how he's celebrating you. I don't care. If tomorrow about this time, what you did to the prophets, I don't do to you, we're going, I'm going to have a problem. Watch what he says here. Watch what he says. And this is what I got to get you to see. Here's the most important part about you right now, no matter what level. Remember, Elijah is the prophet of all prophets at this moment. He is the man. He is hearing from God. I don't care. There's moments, even though you've seen God move, you hearing God, there are moments when you miss it. There are moments when you get depressed. Please hear me. Please hear me. There are moments when life will throw you something that you don't know how to deal with it, but it's okay. Watch this. And it says, the, uh, the third verse says this, and when he saw that here's the important phrase watch and when he who elijah saw that when he saw that he arose and went for his life when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belonged to judah and let him uh and left his servant there now let me unpack this really quick here it is elijah has just finished the showdown on mount carmel very important. He just did show down. And, and as a matter of fact, here he is. Je Ahab has saw the handwork of God. 
and he's gone back to uh, uh, Jezebel and said, man, God is God. When Jezebel hears the story, notice what he, she said. If tomorrow about this time I have not done to Elijah what he's done to the prophets of Baal, I want my life to be ruined. I'm killing him. Watch this. Third verse. She sends a message to Elijah, the prophet of all prophets, the one that heard God, the one that has seen the miracle power of God through his own hands and through what he has said. When he hears the message that is sent from Jezebel, the Bible says in the third verse, this is what I want you to focus on right now because some of you are in a dilemma right now. Is Watch what it says. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. In other words, he imagined in his mind what from what he had heard from the adversary. It says she sent a message, second verse. Third verse says, and when he saw it, how many right now have only heard the threat from an enemy and you have painted a picture in your mind? You have formulated this idea from what you have heard. You it's not actual. It's just you got a threatening message. Here we are. It's very important. Here we are. We have heard. We have not even seen anything happen. We have heard the threat from someone that opposed us. We have not even seen anything. How many can be honest right now? I just heard. I heard through the wind. I got an email. I got a text message. I got a a, 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 a a message from someone that got a message. And now I am running for my life, even though I have not even seen. We're going to have to be honest today. Now watch this. Here's the extreme of this whole text. This is Elijah, the prophet of all prophets at this time in, in, in biblical history. This is the one. Watch this. You are going to be a witness to this. We're just taking inventory today. The question is, how are you seeing what you have heard? It's all here in your mind. This is why the Bible says in Corinthians 10, uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It's not the people. It's, it's, it's not anything that I see. It's not. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Watch this. Watch this. Somebody need to hear this. Because you have heard you're going to get dropped from this. This is the end of the road for you. Next year, you won't. Next year, about this time, what you think you are experiencing, the good time you are having next year, you won't be here. And just because you've heard the threat, from somebody now you have painted the picture in your mind now you are frantically moving you're making hasty decision you are making emotional decision based off what you heard let me tell you something about your emotions your emotions have no intellect in other words every decision you make out of emotions you are going to pay a heavy price for it this is why the songs are written i, I bust the window out of his car her car i, I cut up the furniture I, because it's an emotion, an emotional decision. When I make an emotion, a, a an emotional decision, I pay a heavy cost. How many decisions have you made based off what you heard? You didn't see anything. Now you are building all of this stuff, all of this uh, uh, preventive measures because you heard something you didn't actually see. Now here's the thing. I'm I'm, I'm frantic, even though. I've only heard. Now listen, this is Elijah. This is Elijah. This is the one that said, 1 Kings 17, by my word, there shall be no rain. Watch this. By my word, there shall be no rain. Three years, no rain. This is the one that just called down fire from heaven. Just prior to this, I called down fire from heaven. What happened? Fire falls from heaven. And now the same Elijah, the same powerful man of God, the same man of faith, hears a threat, hears a threat, and now he's running for his life. Don't doubt God. Listen to me. Now, I needed to, to, to paint this like this. I needed you to see it because there are moments 
when we have seen the handwork of God, we've seen God move, and then we build all of this self-confidence because we've seen God move on our behalf. We've seen God perform some things that we said. This is where we get into trouble. When we think that I've gotten, I've gotten it all down, that when we think that I've, 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 I've seen some, some mighty things happen, never build confidence in yourself. And God is showing us today. This is what he's saying to us. Never build confidence in what you think. There are going to be days. There's going to be days when you get up and you're not going to know your left from your right. I still got to stay in faith. I've still got to, I, I still got to believe God. I still got to believe that what he said about me originally is still his final decision. Even though, watch this, watch this, this is very important. That, that I get to. This is very important that we see this. This is where God is moving us into right now. This is where there's going to be threats because he's trying to show us something. He's trying to move us into a different level of relationship. There's so many of us that have judged our relationship with God based off the big explosion. There's so many that have based our relationship on, with God based off of our gifts that we got. It was never relational. It was just because I seen the big explosion. And now, now, the moment, the first time I hear a threat from a formidable opponent, I, I, I forget everything. I'm ready to run. Don't you dare doubt God. Don't you dare doubt God in this season. And now, now, now I want to I want to look. I really want to dig deep into this story because here it is. Elijah, the prophet of all prophets, the man of God in his time. Uh, there was no miracles done at the level of Elijah. But one threat, one threat from a formidable opponent one 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 mention that is a possibility that your lifestyle is about to be taken now you're about to doubt god on everything that you sing i i i fell into a little bit of chaos i don't felt into i don't fell in a moment where things are not going exactly like i wanted them to go now i'm ready to give up here it is elijah falls into a depressive state Elijah, the prophet, he gets into a moment where he is depressed. Now, let me read. Let me let me continue to read. The fourth verse says, but he himself went a day's journey. Watch this. Went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life for I am not better than my father. This is so powerful. Here's what happened. Once I see something happen that is contrary to what I thought was going to happen, I am down to God. So much so, I don't even want to live no more. In other words, watch what he says. He says to God, I am no better than my fathers. Watch this. Very important. I, 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 began, I began again to believe that everything that my fathers had died from, everything that had came and the vices of my of, of my forefathers, everything that my family was a victim to, now I believe that I should be victim to as well. I I, I don't seen the hand of God pull me out and give me a special calling. I don't seen the hand of God do some things for me that they didn't do for my family. But one one small, one thing that go contrary to what I call the good life. Now I'm declaring myself a victim to everything that is in my past. Is there anybody else here today? This is why I want to paint this picture because I wanted you to see. There are days like this, but I cannot doubt God in my moment. I cannot give up. I cannot get depressed to the point where I think it's all, it, it was all for nothing, God, because you didn't move for me the way that I thought. Here it is. What Elijah discovers, here it is, and I want you to get this. It's very powerful. What Elijah discovers, and there, here's what you going to discover. The first miracle in 1 Kings 17, the shutting up of heaven, the shutting down of the heavens at your word. Remember, at your word, there shall be no rain. The first miracle was for Ahab. The first miracle was for Ahab. He's standing before Ahab and he's speaking and he's saying no rain this many years. 
Second miracle that he performed is in 2 Kings 18 when he calls down fire from heaven after gathering the people to prove to the people who is the true and living God. The showdown between Elijah and the prophet of Baal was to prove to the people because the people were halted between two opinions. Here's the thing in the text. The first miracle was for Elijah, the, for Ahab. Second miracle for, was for the people. I'm going to read something to, to, to really validate this point. Watch what it says. The, the, eight, the, seven, the 18th chapter, 46 verse says, And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins, and he ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. In other words, after the showdown, after him proving to the people that God is God, he girds his loin and outruns a horse to the gates of Jezreel. Because he wanted Ahab to go in and tell Jezebel uh, the miracle or the supernaturalness of God concerning him killing all the prophets. Now watch this. This is very important that you get this. When he goes, when Ahab goes in and tells Jezebel what happened and Jezebel don't like him. Because there's so many of you right now, you're going to discover that the first miracle was for Ahab, the second miracle was for the people, and now the very moment that you do something that somebody don't like, you get depressed. In other words, all of the things that you've been doing, all of the performances that you've been performing has only been for you to get likes from people. You thought it was because of your relationship with God. No, because now you're depressed because one person don't like you. One person didn't agree with you. You've been performing. This is why Elijah is so depressed. How can a man of God be depressed? Well, he's now discovering that all that I was doing was not to please God. It was to make sure people stayed happy with me. Oh my goodness, here it is. We got people right now. We 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 are wondering why and today is so difficult for me. I'm doing everything I think people I'm trying to please this person. I'm trying to make this person happy. I'm doing everything. This is why you are so depleted, you are so tired, you are so worn out, you are continually trying to do things. The first miracle was for Ahab. Second miracle was for the people. You never did anything to please God. You are depressed because Jezebel didn't like you or you or she was not impressed with your performance. Now you want to give it all up. And this is why God is bringing you to this place right now as you currently stand to show you nothing you've done was really to please me. Everything you've done was to please people. Oh, somebody didn't like what you said. On Facebook, now you want to give it all up. Somebody didn't like, somebody said, I don't care what you do. I don't care how you perform. You're saying to yourself, everything I've done was to make this one happy. Everything I've done was to make that happy. I've done this to make them happy. I've done this to make sure they like me. I've done, and I'm telling you today, there's, there's some people, I don't care what you do, they'll never be happy with you, and they don't know why they're not happy with you. It's even some people that you say love you and you love them, but they're never, it was never given to them to like. Are you still here today? It was never, it was, it was never given to, for you to do something to make them like. It was all about your obedience to God. But now you're discovering that the everything I've done, I thought it was for God. Everything I've said, I thought it was for God. I love the hoopla. I love the, I love making people happy. But I'm discovering, I'm depressed. Because it wasn't for God, it was for me making everybody like me. I want to see how many likes I can get for this one. I want to see how many times, I want to see how many people will write some good stuff about me. Oh, this is eye opener today. This is, this is because God is ready to move you ahead. This is because God. Is ready to do a new thing in your life. But first, he's got to get you over people. He's got to get you old people. You, you are doubting God after him showing you all the miracles or, 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 or the strength and the capabilities that he's invested in you. By the speaking out of your mouth, you done shut up the heavens. By the speaking out of your mouth, you done call down fire from heaven. But when one person not like you, now you want to give it all up. You are drained. 
because God is letting you discover that all that you have done was to make people, you were a people pleaser. And God says, I'm rearranging things. So what happens? What happens? Y'all get ready for this. Let me tell you what happens. What happens? Elijah, the Bible says that he ran for his life. Listen, you are about to run for your life, not because of the threat of an enemy, but because God is about to separate you. You're going to have to run to regain your life. In other words, <clears throat> you're going to have to run to regain your life. It says, it says, uh, he, uh, the fifth verse says, and as he lay under a juniper tree, uh, behold, there an angel touched him and said unto him, arise and eat. God is about to replenish. There's something that listening to me on the sound of my voice. You have completely completely you have completely been been uh, 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 drained of all of your strength because you've been so busy making people happy thank you apostle john harris you've been so busy pleasing people this is the season that people even though god has given you a love but it won't be your objective and your agenda to make them happy god is raising up people right now that is going to obey God regardless to what someone thinks about it, regardless to how they feel about it, regardless to what their what their thoughts and what their conversation is about it. Here go Elijah. God separates him and God says this is a season of replenishing. You're going to discover something in this season that you probably never discovered before. What you thought you needed to survive, God is going to show you you didn't need that at all. Watch what he says. The sixth verse says, and he looked and behold, there was a cake bacon baked. <clears throat> on the coals and a cruise of water and at his head and he did eat and drink and lay down again resting season watch watch and the angel of the lord seven verse and the angel of the lord came again the second time and touched him and said arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee in other words you're going to need the strength or you're going to need the intervention of god for where he's trying to take you right now you have been through a season of performing you done been through a season of, of seeing great things happen, but you discovered something in the season that that was not about you and God and your relationship with God. That was about you making people happy. So now he says, I'm bringing you aside and I am going to replenish you. I am going to sustain you and I'm going to feed you with something that is going to fortify your spirit because the journey if you're living off the gift, you're going to be again in a place where you would be will be depressed. You'll be in a place where you don't know what you're going to do. And so he says the journey is too great for thee. You are going to have to rely on what God is doing and what he said. Your very uh, desire is going to become what God is trying to make happen in your life. You are going to totally surrender in this season to the call of God upon your life. That's what he's saying. Because you won't make it until you get in divine order. I hope you're listening today. You won't make it until you get in divine order. This is why God separates us. Because there are so many influences. Even Elijah, the man of God. If you're around people that you look at as mentors and and. It's very. I, I, I make this analogy all the time. If I'm driving down the freeway here in my city and the speed limit is 60 and enough people whip by me doing 70, 75 without even being conscious of it. My speed is is, is 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 I speed up to that speed too because of the flow of traffic. I don't even know that I'm in the flow I, I, until I look down and become conscious again that I'm breaking the laws. In other words, here's how it happens. If you don't have the right company around, if you don't have the, the, the right people around, before you know it, you are in their flow of traffic. And depending on what their lifestyle is and on what they are doing, you will find yourself doing the same thing. But you are too important to God. This is why he takes you and he separates you. He says, you've been relying on the gift. You thought it was because of the gift, because everybody gifts, and, and they, they, uh, the reputation comes from the gift. The reputation comes from what I perform, how I perform. But God says, that's not what I judge it by. So I'm separating you, and I'm, I'm allowing you to see that all the things that you thought you needed, you really don't need. But I'm about to represent you again, and you're going to discover that it's going to take a relationship 
with God for me to succeed in this next season of my life. I'm reading from the eighth verse, and he arose and did eat and drink, and when in the strength of that meat forty days, you're not gonna need everything you thought you need. When God strengthens you for this journey that He has predestined for your life, He says, "I can feed you, and you can go in the strength of that feeding forty days." This is a supernatural intervention that I'm speaking of. Watch what it says here, very powerful. Forty days and forty nights uh, unto Harab, this is very important. I want you to stay with me right here. Stay with me right here. To Herod, the Mount of God. This is very significant that you get this. Herod, the Mount of God. Read the ninth verse. And it came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him. And he said unto him, Now here's the moment of separation. He has moved from the place where he is operating and showing and performing for people to a place where he is by himself. This is what God is shifting in you into a place of where it's just you and him. And, and the Bible says he come to the cave of, at the Mount of Herod. This is very important that you get this. And then he asked him a question. Here's the question. Here's the question. Here's the question. Watch the question. And he said unto him, what doest thou here, Elijah. Now, now it's very important that you get this. When God asks a question, it is not for him to get information. It is here, he's asking, it's a rhetorical question, because there's something that he's about to present to you. But first, he's got to ask you the question so you can be honest. He's asking Elijah, what are you doing here in this cave? What calls you to be here, Elijah? Honest answer, please. Honest answer, please. Don't tell you, don't talk about Jezebel. Don't talk about anybody else. Be honest. Be honest. Tell him that I was just performing. I was just doing what people like for me to do. I was gifted. And I was just doing what they wanted me to do because I wanted them to be happy with me. I didn't want them to frown. I want to make people happy. Be honest. Be honest. Elijah, what are you doing here? I need you to tell me first. I need you to get honest because it starts with your honesty first. Here's what God is asking you. What are you doing? How did you get to this point? It's because you're trying to make people happy. It's you, you want to be gifted so that people can call your name and say they like you. But God is telling you, I'm not interested in people liking you. I'm interested in you being obedient to what I said. Watch what it says here. Oh, this is probably. But here it is. He's at Mount Harrop. He's in a cave. Now, if you really, really study and do the, the historical content of this particular passage, here it is. This, some historians say this is the same cave. If you read in Exodus 33, here's, here's the same cave or the same cleft, if you will. The same cleft that Moses was was hid in when God passed by. God passed by. Here he is in the same place. It's very significant in the spirit realm that we see this because God is separating and he's bringing us to the place of lonely so he can speak to us only and he's about to reveal himself again to us. He's, he's, he's about to show us again himself. You want to be in this place because sometimes with the flow of traffic, with us seeing things happen and progress the way that they are happening today, our definition of God sometimes is kind of shifted. Let's say it like this. I don't want to say change because it don't all the way change, but it's shifted. And we have to come to the place again where we can see him without influence. I got to see him again without the influences of the people that I want to make happy, without the influences of the people that I want to like me. Here it is. Ten verse says, and he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altar, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, only I, am left, and they seek my life and take it away. Watch what he's telling God. Now, he's saying it just like so many others are saying it when the pressure is on. Uh, and, and, and like we've heard when we say that we're trying to obey God and do what God has told us to do, we are almost told that that life right there is boring. You're the only one doing that. Man, who's doing that now? Don't you know you got to get it while you can get it? You got to do it while you can do it. And so Elijah is depressed because he's living a lifestyle contrary to the culture. 
He's living a life contrary to the culture. And sometimes when you live a life contrary to the culture because you uh, want to be obedient to what God has said to you, they, they'll make you feel as if you're the only one. And who does that? Nobody does that anymore. Wow, you were that boring. You are, you, you are, man, I can't believe you still talking about, you're going to be committed to this? You're going to be, who does that? It's, and the, here's the position of Elijah. He, he is the one that has obeyed God. One, one dislike from somebody that he wanted to like, now he's depressed. I'm the only one living this life. Or it seems like I'm the only one. And then God reminds him very quickly, no, you are not the only one. It might seem like in your crowd that you are dealing with that you are the only one. But there's 7,000. That have not bowed. There's, there's, there's other people out there that have not bowed. Don't think you're the only one. You know, you want a many, but don't think you're the only one. Well, let me continue on. Let me continue on. Uh, let me continue. And the 11th verse, 11th verse, watch this, very powerful. It says, And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. Now, here it is. Please hear me. Please hear me. Elijah is discovering. And God is making emphasis to him. I'm separating you because you're going to discover that what you thought was God, what you thought was your moment with God, was just your gift and operation. Because the very moment you come against opposition, you're ready to throw the whole thing away. Here it is. Elijah, remember, called down fire from heaven, uh, 18th chapter, 1 Kings. Uh, shut up the heavens, no no water, no water, 17th chapter. But the moment one person opposes him, now he want to throw it all away. He want to get rid of it. He want to fall into a depressive state, like so many of us. What we discovering that the, 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 the miracle wasn't for us. The first miracle was for Ahab. The second miracle was for the people. We were just performing to make people like us. And the very moment, 18th chapter, a third verse, the moment we hear uh, someone saying they don't like what I just said, the moment I hear someone say they'll never like you, they'll never get with you, now I want to throw it all away. Here it is. God says, I'm going to separate you. I'm going to remove all of the people that have influence in your life because you belong to me. You are mine. This is not about your gift. People are not going to prostitute your gift. People are not going to call you in to, to, to say, now he gifted, she gifted. Let them come in and perform. And you perform before them. And now he's showing you again. He's showing you again. Now notice what he does. This is very powerful. I need you to see this. I need he separates him. He takes him to the Mount of Herod. If you read Exodus 33, this is the same place that he hid Moses in the cleft to show himself because he says, I don't want you to get it twisted in this season. It's not the boom, it's not the bam, it's not the, the big, it's not all of that. That's just the gift. And if you're not careful, if you lose your relationship and you only operate in your gift, Elijah, the moment opposition come you're going to want to give up on everything please hear me today please hear what i'm saying you're going to want to give it all up you're going to say nobody likes me i'm the only one doing that i'm the only one he says not so i got seven thousand i got seven thousand that have not bowed down and and you don't know about them because they're not boasting about it like you thought everybody should boast because your crowd has been a crowd of boasters every time your crowd do something they let you know they've done it but i got seven thousand that is doing the work and ain't even saying anything about it a man somebody now watch what he says here he says and he said go for it stand at the mount i'm gonna show you me again because you have your your picture of me has been messed up by the boom by the excitement by the gifts that's what you've been looking for, but that's not me. It's about the relationship. It's about me, you knowing, and you being confirmed by my word. So the Bible says you stand at the opening of the cave. Watch this. Watch this. And behold, the Lord passed by. Here comes God. Now, you got to get this. You got to get this because the enemy will present, him, present himself as an angel of light. If you want to see something spectacular, he says, I got something for you. Because people are being fooled by the spectacular. Oh, oh, stay here with me. Stay here with me. Stay here with me. Because people are being fooled. Watch this. He goes to the opening of the gate. He goes to the opening of the gate. And, and, and behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind. Watch this. A great and strong wind. Here comes a tornado. 
And so here are all the people, uh, here, here are all the prophets are saying, there go God. God is speaking. He just tore up everything. A tornado hit. Ooh, God is mad. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, watch this. Watch this. Stay with me. Strong wind. Rent the mountain and break in pieces the rock before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. Ooh, -wee. the Lord was not in the wind. The thief. John 10, 10, let me interject. Come still killing the story, but I have come that they might have life. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. God is teaching us something. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. I'm speaking the word of God. Watch this. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. Breaking pieces of the wind, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. Oh, there's earthquake in that place. That's the Lord. He's speaking to us right now because the earthquakes are hitting in diverse places. Oh, what, what, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me read. Let me read what it says here. It says, "Earthquake, earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Watch this. Watch this." Twelfth verse says, "And after the earthquake, a fire. You know, there's fires all on the side of of, of California and all over the place. Now, God is really speaking now because they're fire. But let me read. Let me read what it says here. It says, uh, fire." And uh, uh, the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. Now, let me give you the significance of this. And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle. In other words, it was not the miracles. Remember, the first miracle, Elijah, you done. You thought it was me, but uh, you got opposed by Jezebel. You going to go into depression. Then you worked another miracle. It's not about the big event. Don't you get it twisted. It's not about the wind. It's not about the earthquake. It's not about the fire. This next season of your life is about your relationship. When all of the spectacular stuff, all of the big stuff has stopped, can you still believe me at what I said? Can you still hear me when it's not all when I'm not doing every move that you want me to do? When you want to see me, I need God to do something really fast. When he says, no, I just want you to stop. And so I can speak to you. Do you want me or do you want my stuff? Do, are you seeking me or are you just seeking my miracle? What do you want? Do you want me or do you want to see my mighty hand? I want to talk to you. I, I, I want to be in a relationship. I want you to not doubt me when one thing don't go your way. I want you to still trust me when something don't look like. I want you to still trust me. I still want you to trust me when things seem like they're going wrong. I want you to say, I still believe God. I still know that he's more than able. I still know that he can do it. I still, my testimony. I won't change my confession under pressure. Watch what it says here. I'm about to end this. And Elijah heard it and he wrapped his face in the mantle. He says, you are not the mantle. Watch this, the mantle, the call, the mandate, the mantle. You won't be able to fully lock in to the call or the mantle until you can hear the still small voice. That means a relationship. This is what has caused the holdup in the life that God has designed. You were so busy watching the bigness, the watching the explosion. But God says you cannot fully embrace you cannot fully in, walk in the call until you can hear the still small voice. In other words, until you can come aside and hear what my voice, because there's going to be many voices speaking. There's going to be many things that's going to happen that you might think is me because of the, 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 the explosion of it. But until you hear my voice and be able to stand on what I said when it don't even look like anything is happening. If you can stand on that until you get to the place where you hear my voice, you won't be able to fully embrace the call or walk in the mantle or walk in the strength or walk in the power of it. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. And it's the end of the end of the cave. And behold, there was a voice. Uh, came a voice unto him and said, what doest thou here, Elijah? And here come the voice again, because as he come into relationship, he began to understand what the voice is saying. 
the voice is saying, when you can hear a word and it don't look like it, when you can hear what God is saying because of your relationship, he says, now I, I will allow you to do all of the great things that I always call you to do. But we, we, we have gotten off based off our performance for people. And when it's all about just the performance and the hoopla, whenever we hear the threats from an enemy, we want to give up on it all. Depression sets in. So many are facing uh, a depressed moment. All of us, there again, this story is about someone that was working and doing extreme things for God, but fall, fell into the moment of depression, and we all do. For those of you that are understanding my voice right now, you're experiencing like, Lord, what is going on with me? I'm so emotional here, emotionally here. I'm so old, all over the place. I've seen the hand of God. I've seen him move. I I've seen him move. I I've seen. Notice when my relationship falls, all of the great miracles that I've seen won't even count any longer. Because it's about relationship. The miracles should be based on my relationship with God. Because when God decided he wanted to shift, I should not doubt him because he decided that this is a season where it's, it's going to be peace and calm because I'm trying to speak without distraction. Here's the season that many of you are in right now that are under the sound of my voice. You're hearing God call. There's some that maybe have never even heard the call of God on this level. I'm here to announce to you that God is speaking again. He's bringing you aside. That's going to be, God is about to bring some of you out of the comfort zone. You've been in the comfort zone. You were good as long as he was working a miracle. But he says, now is my time. I want you to want me, not just what I do. I want you to desire me, not just what I do. I want you to have me. Because remember, when my relationship gets back in order with God, I got to remember this, that I was the one that when I spoke, I seen God move. When I when when I spoke that there would be no rain, I did see God move. So that's not a doubt. If God can move, that's not the question. Right now, he's causing things to quiet down because he wants you to understand the relationship has been out of order. You doubted when you heard. You didn't even see. You heard of a threat. And now you doubt it. Now you want to give up on the call. You will never be able to wrap yourself in the mantle or into the mandate until you are able to decipher the still small voice. That's where God is. He's in the still small voice. He wants you to be able to hear. He wants you to come aside. He wants you to be able to listen to what he's saying in this season of your life. Amen and amen. I am so excited about your future. I'm so, so excited about this moment in your life. Allow God to do the work. You know, there's some things that God knows about you that I, I, I know you think you know better. We all we all get there. We, we all get it. There's some things about me that God knows more about than I ever will know. I've just got to trust him. There's some things, there's some shifting that are happening in your lives right now. There's some things that you thought would never be away from your life that God has decided that I need to shift. That, that, that's, I'm not mad at you because I shifted it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to free focus you again because once you get focused again, Elijah, you are so powerful. Once you get, once you get focused again, you allow the flow of traffic to cause you to operate like everyone else. You have allowed yourself to be where everybody else was. And that's not what I called you to be. So I'm shifting things in your life. Uh, he t the, the angel tells Elijah, after you're going to go 40 days in the strength of one meal. In other words, there's some things that you thought you needed. You're going to discover, I really don't even need. This was me trying to be like everybody. This was me trying to please everybody else. Every time I try to get into a people-pleasing moment in my life, I get depressed because I got to continue to perform to make them happy. It's not about making them happy. It's about making your, your, your father in heaven happy, your God happy. Because once I make him happy, he makes me happy. Then I'm good for everybody else. But I'm trying to help everybody else when I am totally depleted myself. 
So now he pulls you aside and says, before you try to do anybody else, you do you. Now, now, now that's the real definition of you do you. When we hear you do you, yeah, do you. The first doing that you should do is go to your maker and spend private time so that he can do you right before you try to do anybody else. Because you've been given a false impression of you. Because you will lie to yourself. You will say after you don't realize because you're constantly trying to please people. When you constantly try to please people, you will become whatever it is they need to, to, to gain a smile, to gain a like from them. And then you will convince yourself that that's who you are because you're in the flow of traffic. Well, I'm here to tell you that takes a lot of work to be the person that you are not. Because once you become you, there's nobody that can beat you being you. It's easy for you to be you. Yes, it's challenging because of the call of God that's on your life. It's so tremendous. Yes, but God will strengthen you to be you. You, When you ever notice Jesus himself, you read in the book of Luke, 23rd chapter, 24th chapter, very powerful. Jesus himself. Jesus himself is in the garden, sweating blood. Know without a doubt what his mission and mandate in life is. Knows this without a doubt. But he's still praying, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Let this cup pass from me. And so many of us pray the same prayer. But notice this. After praying this prayer, Father, I know what I came here to do, but this journey is tough. This journey is rough. Man, this this right here on second thought, man. Whew, I didn't know it was going to be like this, in other words. But the Bible says that he finally came to himself and he says, Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. In other words, Father, I, 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 I got beside myself. I, 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 but I'm back now. I'm back now. I know you know more about this than I know about this. So I'm trusting you to take me to victory. So nevertheless, disregard what I just prayed. Just disregard. It was tough. I'm sweating blood. So much pressure. So much pressure of sweating blood. But, the, but disregard. Not my will. Not what I want. Not what I desire. But let your will be done. Notice what happened. Immediately after coming into agreement with God about the plan for his life. Notice what the Bible says. An angel comes and ministers to him and strengthens him for his journey. In other words, if I will agree with God, no matter how difficult the task is, if I agree with him because he tells me like he tells Elijah, the journey is too much for you. You are going to need the strength of a supernatural intervention. If you will allow God to strengthen you, then you will have the power for the journey. But you're going to have to come in agreement with what God has said about your life. It's not about you any longer. It's not about making people happy. Forget people. Forget about what they think about it. Forget about how they say your life is boring. Forget about them. It's not about what they think. It's not about the flow of traffic. It's about the will of God. And when you are in the will of God, sometimes that journey is a lonely journey. But the rewards of being in that journey. So Jesus says, nevertheless, that's a very powerful statement, nevertheless. In other words, in other words, if I can obey the will of God for my life, I will never have to settle for less again. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And then the angel strengthened him for his journey. That's like Elijah. You're going to have to come into agreement with me, not what you think about it, but what God has already predestined. I have to say yes to that so he can give me the strength needed to move further in my journey. That's what God is saying today. This is where we are today. I don't care what who who don't think about it and how they think about it and whatever they think about it. I don't care. I'm, I am determined that no matter what people say and how they feel about it, I'm determined to please God and not people. Yes, I'm determined to please God and not people. Let's pray together. Can we pray together? Because I believe God is doing something in your life as well as my life. God is doing a hostile takeover of his land and his world again. And he's using you to do it.
Yes, I pray that God will invade your space. I pray that God will move in on you again and take over and, and, and give you clear direction again for this journey. I, I pray that he strengthen you for your journey because it is time and he's about to move. Father, thank you right now. Thank you for this word. Thank you for the people that are listening to this word. Thank you for uh, uh, God just being gracious enough to us to speak to us again, God, to redirect us back in the right path, back on the right road again. It's been tough, God. There's been days that I know, didn't know my up from down, left from right, but that's okay. You always wanted me to depend on you anyway, and I depend on you. I trust you when I can't trace you. When I don't know what to do, I can depend on you. I just thank you for everyone that's here, God. I pray that you invade their space, God. Give them the direction, God. Fulfill their their hearts, God. And let them know they only be fulfilled when they're following your instruction. So we say yes to your call, yes to your will, yes to your way. Thank you for our families. Thank you for blessing. God, thank you for us being a light to our family. Thank you for us showing our family way through the examples that we live. Thank you, Father, again, for this lunchtime uplift. Thank you for your word penetrating the hearts of people everywhere. And we thank you again because you are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for us. We just appreciate you again. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm excited. Would you do me a favor? Uh, share this video. Share this video. Share this video. God loves you. His desire is that you succeed 100 percent 100 percent there's no doubt about that there's no question about god's love and his desire for you to be successful hold on trust him when you can't trace him trust him in the times when it seems like nothing is happening because there's so much happening that we cannot see with our natural eye god is working on your behalf even right now He's working on your back. So I appreciate you guys. Listen, listen, listen. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I am right here. No matter where I am in the world, I'm going to be right here because I love being in this space with such incredible people. You are so incredible. You are so incredible. You are such, a, such an incredible person. Tomorrow night, that's Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m., 1111 West 7th Street, the Brick and Mortar Network uh, Believers. If you have not been to a Network of Believers service or a Network of Believers Bible study, man, you should be there. Ask anybody. We go deep into the understanding of what God is trying to do. And we try to always be open for a, a rhema word. In other words, what he's not just picking a random uh, title, but making sure that we allow him to speak in the moment because there's some freshness about God that he wants us to say and to speak now, right now. Amen. Amen. So I invite you out personally, invite you out tomorrow, Tuesday, tomorrow's Tuesday. I invite you guys out. I, I would love to see your face and play. All is invited. All everybody is invited. We love your fellowship. Thank you so much. Holla at you guys. Have the best Monday that one could have. For those of you who want to give, you can see the address in there. Uh, uh, N-O-B seed. That's at the cash app. N-O-B seed. You can catch us there. Okay? Thank you guys again for being in the house. Anitra, Pastor Deidre, uh, Raina, Paris, Bernadette, Sha. Lisa, man, I got some great people. Uh, 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 Rapunzel, my cousin Rapunzel out of uh, Georgia. Uh, thank you guys all. My wife, Teresa, of course. Valerie Grace, thank you so much for being in the house. John Holman, uh, Apostle John Harris, my brother. Thank you for the Texas of uh, text of encouragement thank you so much man bless you and your ministry there in atlanta georgia my cousin pastor joe taller joe taller moore thank you for your encouragement always you encourage doing a tremendous job there in west virginia thank you michelle king thank you so much for tuning in today michelle cox thank you for tuning in today tracy Hamilton, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, Ang Angelica Bolden, thank you so much. Pastor Stevie Robinson, always a great support. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Kimberly Key Bell, Dr. Bell, thank you for being in the house. Darwin Miller, thank you so much. Blessings to you and your family. Dwayne Thompson, thank you so much. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Uh, 
thank you, uh, Nolan, Pastor Nolan Brown, Marissa Brown. Thank you so much, Judge Rita Bailey. Thank you so much, Artie Reynolds. Thank you so much. You can catch Artie Reynolds on um uh, American Idol, American American Idol. He's a, a band member at American Idol. Thank you, Artie, for tuning in out of New York City. Thank you guys for tuning in. Nina Roberts, thank you so much and for all that I might have missed. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate your time. Pastor G is out of here. Holla. Love you guys. Leah, 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 San Francisco, my sister. Thank you so much. Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you guys for being in the house. Holla.